It's not even controversial anymore. People know in Florida their freedoms are going to be respected. Miranda, greetings. Greetings. Oh, so good to see you. OK, so let's start uh, with a bill or an effort that I actually disagree with fundamentally. But so there is an effort among Florida Republicans when it comes to scholarships and grants for students to block them if they are supporting a particular group. Which group is that? Basically, if they're supporting any sort of terrorist groups like Hamas, but it also refers to Palestine, too. So I don't know. It's kind of confusing for me because I don't know how they're going to differentiate between the students who are pro-Palestine or pro-terrorist organizations. Yeah. It does not define what that support is. Right. So it doesn't really say like, you know, what it doesn't. To me, it's just it's so up in the air that they're going to run into a whole bunch of First Amendment issues if they start doing this. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's a it's a it's a blatant First Amendment violation. Remember, the First Amendment protects us against government retribution, essentially, for expressing. So, you know, people always talk about, you know, there are there are private um, punishments, so to speak, for speech. Um, but it's about the government. And to me, this is the government saying, if you are engaged in speech we don't like, even if it's abhorrent, like supporting a terror organization, we as the government are going to punish you monetarily. And I just don't see, to me, it's like one of those things in Florida where it's like, let's send a message that this isn't okay here, but also, you know, cross a lot of constitutional boundaries in the meantime. Now, Ron DeSantis did say, um, as part of his presidential bid, that he would plan to cancel student visas for anyone sharing, quote, common cause with Hamas. And I I see the concern, you know, if there's someone who's like pro Hamas and they want a visa from Palestine to study here. But that I don't know how you how you like you said, how do you decide what is sharing common cause with Hamas? Yeah. And especially in an issue like this, where I think there's a lot of lack of education in general and people are just very passionate. You know, nobody likes to see war and. It's easy to just, you know, form an opinion without actually understanding what your opinion is, you know, representing or what how it's coming across. So I think that it could just put a lot of like, you know, very like innocent students in a pos in a position where they shouldn't be in um, simply for either a lack of education or because they just don't know how to express their opinion in an educated way because they feel passionate. So I don't know. I don't I, I don't think it's going to get put, put through. You're right. It's probably just another one of those this is a message and we're going to say it out loud and proud. You know, it's um, it's a touchy subject. Yeah, it's really weird to me. DeSantis does this, though. This is we've talked about this in several ways. He almost like tries to push back against wokeness in a way that's like just takes things full circle and is just goes way too far. So I don't know. I don't get it. It's not it's not my particular favorite brand of politics. Um, no. OK, let's see. There's uh, news outlets continue to be shocked by um, Floridians supporting Trump over DeSantis. Are you yeah. shocked by that? I'm not shocked by that because I think that they were they were both supported for completely different reasons. Like people supported DeSantis to be our governor. They like what he does for our state. They supported Trump to be our president and they liked what he was doing for our country in their own opinion. So now you have our governor who is campaigning all across the nation and not really seeded what he was voted by Floridians to do. Um, and I think that that's pretty logical to be a Floridian who voted for DeSantis and think, all right, you're not doing what I voted you for. And Trump's doing what he what I want him to do. So I think that there's it's pretty logical to me. It's not a surprise by any measure that he's losing the support of Floridians in the presidential race because they didn't vote for him to be president. They voted for him to be the governor. Yeah, but also, I mean, governors run for president all the time. And our governor had a short-lived bid for the presidency. And it's not like just because he was our governor, the Democratic Party in our state supported him. Of course they didn't. So that yeah. just, uh, that doesn't make any sense. And part of it is does have to do with, well, can he win, right? Um, yeah. And right now it seems pretty clear that Trump is just so far out ahead. So the idea that, oh, just because you're a candidate from that state, that your party has to support you in that state, 
I don't know why the media is so surprised by it. All right, one more. Since we talked about a reading that happened in the 10th grade classroom in Seattle that was deeply inappropriate, and then people were like, oh, you want to ban books, Brandy? Um, no, but I think parents ought to have a right to consent to what their kids are reading at schools. Uh, Pink is having at her Florida concerts, she's got a gift for folks. Yeah, she's going to be giving out about 2,000 different banned books at her concerts. I'm not sure what she's going to do, throw them at the crowd or <laughs> hand them out at the ticket booths. But this always bothers me because I don't think that the public school is the end all be all of education. And if you can't get something at, at public school, then go find it on Amazon or a, another library. I don't know. It's It's such a, I don't know. It's such a weird way to promote banned books. Is that a concert? I don't know. I just don't care. It's like, if you want to spend all that money giving out banned books that, like you said, people can just go get on Amazon. It's not like the state of Florida is saying, like, burning every copy of this book in the middle of the streets. No, they're saying as a government, we're not going to be responsible for putting this literature in the hands of kids or whatever it is. And we can have a reasonable debate. But if Pink wants to then hand them out, okay, you're not... The government isn't stopping people from reading those books. So no. it's just virtue. Signaling. I think the word banned is being used a little bit too broadly because it really is just about narrowing the focus in school to the education and the curriculum that kids really do need. And social issues can be, and they're better taught outside of the classroom too yeah. by family and friends. Yeah, so. and, and this whole idea of, of course, there's there have always been books deemed inappropriate for schools. You wouldn't put Playboy magazine in the school library. So that is, are we calling that banned? Oh, that's been banned? No, it's just what is appropriate for people that age for the government to allow them access to and what isn't. So yeah. anyway, okay, Miranda, so good to see you. I know you got out, <laughs> enjoyed the great outdoors in Florida this past weekend. So I'm happy to see you just looking and sounding a whole lot better. Yes, I'm getting there for sure. I still have a little bit of a raspy voice, but better every day. Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure if we're going to see you next week because it's Thanksgiving. We're not, we don't have a show on Thursday. Who knows? Maybe we'll do something early. So I won't promise anything yet, but we'll see you soon. See you soon. It's not even controversial anymore. People know in Florida, their freedoms are going to be respected.